better than that old mansion. Yeah, I reckon really going to feel the same way about it. Well, not me. Give me city living any time. Well, we ain't got things in working order yet. Did you find the pump? Yes, sir. Lay a fire in the fireplace? Yes, sir. Well, now, I want you to go out and get some wood and lay it by, because the first thing your granny's going to want to do is start cooking. Yes, sir. And uh, bring them guns and uh, put them up on the wall in there. Place won't seem like home to Granny without them guns on the wall. I'll take care of that right away, Uncle Jeff. Hello, May. We'll leave the pots and pans to you. Yes, sir, Pop. Look what I'm Mr. Clark. Oh, good morning, Miss Gradale. What is this? Well, there's a cabin. Just like the one back home. But this is Beverly Hills. You have a mansion. Why do you want this? It's a surprise for Granny. You see, today is her birthday, and she's been kind of homesick for the hills lately. Then why don't you take her back to the hills? <laughs> well, we was going to do that, but your husband was dead set against us leaving. Milburn? Yes, ma'am. He's the one that thought of bringing his cabin here. Milburn? Yes, ma'am. He had one of them uh, movie companies to build it. He'll pay for this. Yes, ma'am. He already had. What? <laughs> well, I tried to argue him out of it, but he said it was his birthday present to Granny. I'll give him a birthday present. Well, doggy, born the same day as Granny, huh? <laughs> you got a surprise for him? Have I ever? <laughs> well, he'll be back directly. Him and Miss Jean is taking Granny for a ride whilst we get the cabin ready to surprise her. And it wasn't easy. Getting that little woman out of the house was harder than getting a hot mule out of a cool barn. Granny, you're home. Why did you bring me back here? My family don't want me. What? You hear them trying to get shed of me this morning? <laughs> Go outside for a while, Granny. Take a ride. Make yourself scared. Oh, <laughs> Granny, they just wanted Nobody to... even remembered my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go around to the kitchen and put the candle to the cake. Right. Now, Granny, I'm sure your family wouldn't forget your birthday. Did you hear anybody say happy birthday? No, but... Did you see anybody give me a present? No, but... As much as one little old posy to pin on my dress? No, but... A I... single crumb of a birthday cake with candles on it? Or hear my kinfolk singing to me? No, but... Oh, here comes Mr. Clampett. I'll bet he has something in mind. Yeah, how to get rid of poor old wore-out useless granny, that's why. Yeah, granny, it's easy to bring you back. Now, we got a little surprise for you, but first off, we want you to put on this here blindfold. Ah, they're fixing the fire and squad me. You're going to stand me up against a wall and shoot me. Oh, you hush that kind of talk. Here are the guns, Uncle Jed. <laughs> Here, you darn fool. Take him around back. Well, you didn't say which wall. <laughs> Quiet him down, put on his blindfold, and come around back with us. No, at least give me a running start to make it to the head. <laughs> yes, Rose. Give me them guns and go fetch your granny back. <laughs> oh, well. The surprise when she sees the cabin will be worth all this. Yeah, I reckon so. Oh, speaking of surprises, Miss Drysdale wants you to come right home. She's got one for you. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I put Granny in yonder and told her not to take off the blindfold till she heard the signal. What's the signal? This here? They got me. They got me. It took them two shots, but they got me. <laughs> It's a cabin. It's a little cabin from back home. I've done one to heaven. <laughs> Thank you. It's just like I always hoped it would be. <laughs> I want that horrible shack demolished. Oh, you can do better than that. Try happy birthday. Milburn, have you no civic pride, no sense of social responsibility, placing that monstrosity in the very center of Beverly Hill? Well, it's just till Granny gets over her homesickness. Believe me, it's a temporary thing. Now, come on. Is that a promise? The cabin is only temporary? Well, it's just a surprise for Granny's birthday. Now, remember, say nice things, keep my largest depositor happy. You are obsessed with money. Money, 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 money. 
That's it. Say nice things. <laughs> Commencing to look like a brush fire. Yeah, when you get to be Granny's age, you can trick near bake a cake without an oven. <laughs> oh, good. Here come Mr. and Mrs. Drysdale. Fine. I kind of think they ought to be the first ones in, toting the cake. Ellie Mae, what's Granny doing? Just sitting there rocking with a happy look on her face. <laughs> and the saints come marching in. And the saints come marching in. Oh, it's nice to be here in heaven when the saints come marching in. This fire is scorching me. Surprise, Granny. Ah, me dry tail. They done sent me to the other place. <laughs> Type people. And for my term project in sociology, I'm preparing a paper on the vanishing servant class. I've chosen this section of Beverly Hills for a mansion-to-mansion -mansion survey. Uh, now then, first question. Where in a hurry? Oh, please, lady, I'm trying to get out of college the hard way. You know, graduate, cap and gown, pomp and circumstance, mom and dad, the new watch, proud of your daughter, the whole bit. <laughs> well, then, must we listen to this prattle? Come inside the way, get a move on. Well, while we're waiting, how many servants do you employ? Mm -hmm. With the gardener, four or five, I guess. You're not sure? Well, who counts? Hurry, Miss Hathaway. May I ask you how much you pay these servants? I don't think that's any of your business. Come, Milburn. <laughs> Did you employ more or fewer servants five years ago? Did you pay them more or less than now? <laughs> Did you operate a guillotine during the French Revolution? <laughs> you have the kind face of a lower income type. May I ask you some questions? Of course, yes. Get in the car. Right, Chief. Sorry, Miss, when Mr. Drysdale cracks the whip, I must obey. Do you find that automation and labor-saving devices are replacing the servants to the extent that it affects the labor pool of qualified domestic workers? <laughs> One question answered out of 103. Well, that's the best I've done yet. <laughs> Well, howdy there, little lady. Hello. Uh, do you do the gardening here? Well, I do some of the gardening and lots of other things besides. Place this size keeps me and my whole family busy. Oh, there's a family of you. How many? Four. Uh, Granny, uh, today's her birthday. And Ellie Mae and Jethro and me. Four of you? To take care of a place this size? Well, it uh, don't look like much, but that's a 35-room house there. And then there's about uh, nine, ten acres of ground besides. <laughs> Fantastic. How much does Mr. Drysdale pay you for this? Oh, he don't pay us nothing. <laughs> no, ma'am. We don't expect him to. Why, if it wasn't for Mr. Drysdale, we'd all still be back in the hills. It was him that fixed it so we could live on his grand estate. But he, he pays you no money for the work you do? Is he supposed to? <laughs> oh, I want to ask you and your family a lot of questions. Can we go inside and talk? Well, uh, they ain't in the mansion. They's in the cabin around back. Follow me. A cabin? In Beverly Hills? <laughs> Cabin. In Beverly Hills. Hey, uh, young lady, this here's my family. Here's Granny and uh, Jethro and Ellie Mae. Howdy! Tobacco Road on Crestview Drive. <laughs> I don't believe I caught your name. Oh, uh, Jennings. Virginia Jennings. Well, uh, come on in. Set a spell. This is your house? Well, uh, strictly speaking, it belongs to Mr. Drysdale, but he had it put here first. He's a mighty nice man. Yeah, I'm all choked up. <laughs> uh, Granny, this young lady wants to ask us some questions. That's the way for young folks to learn. <laughs> yes, sir, you like the fire under my soap kettle. Yes, I'm Granny. Ellie Mae, you fetch the lie in the rendering. Yes, I'm Granny. Granny, you hadn't ought to be making soap on your birthday. Got to, Jed. We're plumb out. You mean you have to make your own soap? If I wanted, I do. Well, can't you just get it from the Drysdales? Oh, shucks, no. They use that fancy store button stuff. <laughs> Much too highfalutin for folks like us. Sure. <laughs> My sociology professor will never believe this. Fireplace don't draw too good, Granny. Jed, 
I'm so grateful to have a fire to cook over again that I don't mind breathing a little smoke. Haven't you had a fire before now? Not out here in California, no man. <laughs> Not since we left the hills, but near two years ago. <laughs> Hope you stay and share vittles with us, ma'am. That's a fine-looking mess of dandelion greens grannies are cooking. <laughs> Ellie and me picked them from Miss Drysdale's yard last night. <laughs> She caught us. Oh, was she mad? Turn the hose on us. Picking dandelions out of her yard? Oh, not that she wants them for herself. Oh, no. Greens ain't good enough for Banker Drysdale's table. They have to have store-bought, butcher-cut, paper-wrapped meat every day. Now, Granny, you got to remember that Drysdale's is high muckety-muck society folks. Next to them, we rough as cobs. Uh, what do you eat, Granny? Oh, grits and greens, a little side meat now and then, and a scrawny California rabbit if Jed goes out hunting. Now, Granny, don't be poor, Martha. Do you know that when Cousin Pearl sends us a package of food from back home, ain't nobody in Beverly Hills eats better? What does your Cousin Pearl send you? Oh, the best of everything. Crawdads, catfish, shoulder down possum. <laughs> we was hoping for some fresh laid eggs. But Miss Drysdale says we have to get rid of our chickens. Granny! Granny, you saw Kittle's race. Should I light the fire? Not until I check the wind, Ellie. If it's blowing over toward the Drysdale's, we better hold off. The smell of Granny's soap cooking just naturally drives that woman into a rage and fury. <laughs> this whole situation is an incredible anachronism. It's medieval Europe. It's feudalism. It's serfdom. You are vassals enthralled to a liege lord. How can this despicable anomaly exist in an enlightened 20th century America? Uh, no. Did you ever hear such big words come out of such a little girl? Well, if, hey, if you went to school, you could talk like that. You never went to school? Oh, not more than a day or two. In your whole life? That's right. Granny, may I come back later today? You betcha. We're gonna fire up my birthday cake again and open up my present. I'd like to bring a camera, a tape recorder, and a sociology professor. Well, now, I can't let you give me no camera or recorder, but I will take a look at that sociable profession. <laughs> it's the truth, Professor. He's the president of this bank. Now, now, Virginia, let's be realistic. Mr. Drysdale is a community leader, a respected man, a responsible citizen. A feudal lord, that's what he is. And the Crampets are his serfs, his vassals. They live in a little shack on the grounds of his estate. They have to poach dandelions from his lawn in order to eat. They'd starve if their family didn't send him food packages from back in the hills. <laughs> Let's keep our voice down, shall we? Professor Graham, I have found a family living in virtual bondage in the very center of the wealthiest section of the wealthiest city of the wealthiest country in the world. They face poverty, pestilence, famine. Jimmy, lower your voice. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are riding the boulevards of Beverly Hills, and he wants me to lower my voice. I say let's storm this Bastille. Let's liberate the prisoners of the tyrant Drysdale. Let's show him this is the land of the free and the home of the brave. Let's get out of here. Down with Drysdale and death. Yeah, let's get him! Yeah, <laughs> oh, Margaret, will you change records? I've listened to you sing the hillbilly blues that's coming out of my ears. But, but I put the cabin where no one can see it. All right, you can see it. Well, why did you go over there? Well, let them cook soap. They're clean people. Excuse me, Chief. The young lady who was up at the Clampett Mansion is here with the sociology professor. They demand to see you. What about? Clappets. They wish to register a strong complaint. Well, throw them out. <laughs> Better see them, Chief. The bank guard says they are spokesmen for what might be described as rather an ugly mob. What a choice. I can listen to my wife or face an ugly mob. I'll take the mob. Goodbye, dear. <laughs> Come in, please. Mr. Drysdale, this is Professor Robert Graham of the Department of Social Sciences at the University. Big deal. So what's your complaint about the planets? Uh-huh. You've had others. Every day, and I'm sick of them. Have you no social conscience, no civic pride? Has your greed uh, destroyed Jimmy, everything? I'd better do the talking. Uh, Mr. Drysdale, are you responsible for a family of four hillbillies occupying a squalid cabin in the middle of Beverly Hills? Yes, I am, and it's not squalid, it's clean. <laughs> Does it have modern conveniences, modern plumbing? No, but they're very happy there. Or would be, if Budinsky's like you would leave them alone. Would you live there, Mr. Drysdale? Oh, of course not. My wife would leave me like that. Hey, wait a minute, me. No, I still couldn't live the way the Clappets do. 
food they ate. <laughs> and yet you expect your neighbors to tolerate a condition like that in the most fashionable street in Beverly Hills. But you can't see them from the street. I was very careful to put the cabin behind some trees. <laughs> Ask him about their wages. Yes, yes. Is it true that not one of them earns even a minimum salary? <laughs> so what? They don't need money. They wouldn't know how to handle it if they had it. I take care of all their needs. Anything they want, they come to me. Well, Professor, have you heard enough? I think so. Well, I think so, too. And next time, keep your nose out of other people's business. The Clappets are staying right where they are. We'll see about that, you tyrant. Caesar had his Brutus, Charles I is Cromwell, and Drysdale will have his Ginny Jennings. <laughs> what a couple of ding-a-lings they are. What a magnificent mansion. Take a good look, Professor. And then I'll take you around back and show you where the Clampets live. The poor people who take care of this beautiful estate. That lawn, it, it's like a carpet. Watered by the tears of the oppressed. <laughs> Clipped by toil-worn hands. Now, Ginny, save it for your term paper. <laughs> Is that you, Pop? That little was a fancy foot stomping, Uncle Jed. Hey, I dash me up a pot throat too. Me too. Same here. Yes, Drew, I thought you primed this pump. Didn't do no good. Mr. Drysdale forgot to connect the water. Well, uh, take this bucket and fill it from one of them hose spigots outside. Yes, sir, Uncle Jed. Well, there it is. Why, it's even worse than you described it. Do you know they didn't even have fire until today? Incredible. How can the Drysdale sit up there in their million-dollar mansion eating store-bought, butcher-cut, paper-wrapped meat while their servants live here eating grass? It's a throwback. It's a hundred years of civilization down the drain. Howdy, Miss Jenny. Oh, hello, Jethro. Uh, this is Professor Graham. Howdy. Oh, hello, Jethro. Uh, what's that you're carrying? Well, drinking water. Don't you have water in the cabin? Mr. Drysdale never had it hooked up. We're supposed to die of thirst. <laughs> Come on inside. It's Granny's birthday and we's having a square dance. Isn't that magnificent? Starving, dying of thirst, and they can still dance. The flame of the human spirit is hard to extinguish. Inspired by courage like that, we shall lead these people to freedom. I am expecting my bridge club, and we cannot possibly concentrate on our game with this dreadful uproar going on not 50 feet from my patio. I demand that you cease at once, or I'll have this cabin dismantled and hauled away to the city dump. But Miss Drysdale, it's Granny's birthday and... That is my ultimatum. Terminate this cacophonous din instantly and permanently, or else... Jed, does that mean we can dance or we can't dance? It means we can't dance. It means we must dance. What? If the chains of bondage are to be broken, let us break them now. But I thought you said we had to dance. <laughs> we do, and we shall. But not here in this squalid cabin, no. We shall dance in that magnificent mansion. Yeah, I'm for that. Follow me, we'll dance the dance of defiance. Jimmy! Granny, you ever hear that dance? No, but if I can watch her for a minute or two, I'll be able to pick it up. <laughs> Everybody, we're getting too crowded in here anyway. Clampets, <laughs> you have danced now for half an hour in this beautiful hall. Has Mrs. Drysdale dared to show her face? No! <laughs> That's right, she ain't. Has she dared to utter one word of protest? No! 
He's right worked up about it, ain't he? <laughs> now you see how the tyrant quails in the face of courage. You have danced the dance of defiance and your fetters are broken. Doggone it, mind me like it. Clemens, <laughs> now you must press on to ultimate victory. You must not return to that cabin. You must sleep here tonight. You must eat here tonight. I'm for that. I've been for it all along. <laughs> Jethro, noble Spartacus, you shall lead your people to happiness. Hot diggity dog, you heard her. Head for the kitchen. <laughs> Come on, folks, join us for supper. Shall we? No. We have ignited the torch of liberty, but they have won the battle of freedom. You're right. To them alone belong the fruits of victory. Right. Store-bought, butcher cut, paper-wrapped meat. <laughs> <laughs> presentation.